locally and internationally do very important work from an organization that has helped and empowered women over the years from Zonta Club 3 Colombo. Joining us today are Farida Aliboy and Kamini Senaratna. Hi Kamini, hi Farida. Hello. Thank you for hi. joining us. It's okay. So tell me a little bit more about the Zonta Club. It's a global organization where it's a conglomeration of uh, say like-minded professionals from diverse backgrounds and uh, we have come together with a purpose that is to empower women through advocacy and service. So we have been uh, there for 103 years as of uh, the 8th of uh, November uh, 2022. We started in 1919 in um, uh, Buffalo, New York. And this is where uh, a couple of um, business ladies got together and uh, established uh, the Zanta Club and since then we have come a very long way. Um, we have uh, clubs in uh, 63 countries, over 1,100 clubs worldwide and uh, approximately 27,000 membership. So we are uh, basically, what's interesting is that uh, we are a group of uh, mostly uh, consisting of women, professional women who uh, work for women. So that's, I think, is the uniqueness of uh, the Zonta Club uh, worldwide, Zonta International. So um, Zonta International has, um, what do you say, uh, they have causes, which is like an umbrella for all the clubs in the uh, world. So we have, uh, one of the causes is basically um, ending child marriages and, and the other one is uh, empowering women. The other one being uh, the most important I presume is the to say uh, no to violence against women and girls. So uh, we are working, all of us are working hard on these objectives in our own little way, club wise, district wise, um, area-wise rather, also and district-wise. So uh, we are working hard towards it in our own little way, trying to make a difference in the world and as Zonta says, to make a better world for women and girls. Now, um, you have a lot of ongoing projects regarding women and gender-based violence. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Actually, when you talk about uh, gender-based violence or violence against women, uh, the most important fact is your knowledge. If you have knowledge on the subject, you have power. You know what to do, you know what not to do. You know when you're violated and you know when you're not. So, um, it's uh, on this subject, what we are focusing on advocacy. So, we have been right throughout, not only our club, all the clubs in the world, especially during the activism period uh, for violence against women from starting very soon from the 25th of November to 10th of December uh, we have uh, all, all the clubs have their own programs and especially Zonta Club 3 of Colombo we have been uh, having workshops on awareness basically we have got the the some eminent lawyers in the field the women and children's bureau and we go and educate uh, ladies basically and sometimes even men because they need to know how not to, uh, you know, step in to another person's uh, privacy level. So these are important things that we are trying to do. So advocacy wise, actually we are a little excited uh, this time around also. We are trying trying to do an awareness program in the Slave Island area. We are trying to, um, the community ladies get involved in a, an entire day's program. We are talking about um, how to advocacy, how to, you know, be aware of uh, being away from, you know, getting away from uh, uh, violence against themselves. And it, the facts are alarming, actually. If we, we might ask, you know, what's the relevance? This is something I used to ask myself some time back. You know, what's the relevance of uh, violence against women here in Sri Lanka? You know, we don't hear much about all this. But uh, the thing is, actually, one out of every five women are um, you know, either sexually or 
uh, physically violated by their uh, partners. But the most alarming in my view is that one out of every four women have been violated either physically or uh, sexually by, by the age of 15. So, these are girls, these are young girls who, who go on to become mothers, who or go on to you know carry the burden of a family in their hands, but let, a, let alone they are, they are members of this society. So, we, and it is only a little thing that we have to do to stop it, it is just to you know if you make them aware, if, you, if they know where they are, it will stop this to a great deal. So, we are, uh, we have, uh, uh, have we have uh, had many programs in the past and this year round also we are planning to do this uh, project with the uh, ladies from the Save Island area but we are not stopping it at that point. We want to take it on further, empower them a little bit more, give them some life skills to bring them out of uh, you know if they are in a situation of that nature we can bring them out but apart from that we want to give them support to educate themselves and you know vocationally or you know some kind of life skill and uh, also apart from that we are I think we are also excited we are I, we have uh, started working with architecture schools and uh, we have another program starting uh, on the 25th of uh, November and uh, where we have to we are uh, we have to actually teach the architecture students what this problem is violence against women because if you know that they will know how to design buildings, public spaces around this factor because as architecture students they are not uh, trained in that manner to address this issue. So, uh, we will start that as well and I want to continue that from uh, our club as a project right throughout. I think that is a wonderful initiative because especially in Sri Lanka this is certainly not something that is thought about. And to think that you know, with architecture, you can create spaces that make women feel safe is, I think, exactly. very important and certainly exactly. timely. Exactly. One thing when we were chatting earlier that I really liked how you mentioned that what you do, it's not just about handouts; it's about yes. empowering women. Exactly. Right. So, can you tell me more about that? Why is the focus on? Actually, empowerment is what brings everyone to where we are. If you take you for example me for example, we are here because we are empowered one way or the other. So, handing, if you give handouts to uh, a lady in distress, what would happen? They would learn to lean on that, they, would, they will never come out of their position because they will be looked after or provided for. So, we do, it is not, it is not that we do not give handouts to, you know, when it comes to certain scenarios, you need to, but that is not going to help you raise by yourself. So, this is why empowerment is important because you will raise yourself and people around you, ladies, gents, children, anybody, they will raise the others around you. So, that is why empowerment is so important and that is why Zonta is very keen on empowering women. That is wonderful. I think Farida, you had something to… Yeah, no, uh, uh, what I am, uh, what is most important is uh, when you give somebody money, it ends where the money ends. Uh, as compared to when you teach them a skill or something where they can enhance their lifestyle. And uh, I truly believe that women are the drivers of society. Uh, even where there is a man in the house, it is the woman who leads uh, the welfare of the family and uh, after that uh, the entire society. Uh, so, it is important to let her uh, uh, be able uh, to uh, uh, able to support the family in a way that it is a long term, it is not a one off thing. So, that is why most of our projects have actually, uh, I mean the tagline for this biennium is actually building a better life for women and children. Uh, so, uh, it is not only about giving and helping, it is about helping them build. Exactly. That is a lovely thought. Now, you have collaborated with the ICCB. How did that come to be the International Christmas Charity Bazaar? Okay, so, this actually started in 2016 uh, where, we, uh, where we launched our flagship uh, uh, project called ZU or uh, Zonta Empowers Women. Okay. Uh, where we, uh, it was a pilot project in uh, the Madhu Church region 
uh, of north and east because at that time those areas uh, uh, didn't have any source of livelihood with uh, you know they have a lot of problems there with drought famine uh, they're not able to do agriculture because of the quality of the soil lack of water and uh, so we uh, we took upon ourselves uh, the challenge to teach them a skill and uh, we taught we uh, we started off with 15 ladies who uh, who were taught how to sew uh, so we we arranged for a you know teacher to go across so this is like a four and a half hour drive from anuradhapura so we had to get somebody from anuradhapura to drive down to those areas uh, we you know provided them with all the kits uh, sewing machines uh, 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 and uh, they were taught to sew uh, subsequently we extended that project to other uh, villages in that area uh, so we uh, we moved to velioya we moved to nandimitra gama we moved to bogasweva uh, we concentrated on the on the north and the east because uh, they were they truly needed it uh, because they were far away from colombo not much help reached them and uh, we saw the dire straits that they were in uh, subsequently these ladies learned to sew uh, they were making beautiful hand painted products uh, you know cushion covers uh, pouches bags skirts clothes but they didn't have a market for these uh, they were they didn't know how to market these products they didn't know how to sell what they made so you know initially they would just go to the local market and sell at a you know piddly amount of 100 200 rupees and that was it uh, and we realized that in colombo they they could fetch a better price for what they were making uh, and incidentally at that time we got an opportunity with the iccb to be able to sell at the bazaar uh, we were given a table uh, to uh, from from them and uh, so we started off by uh, bringing the products that were made by our zoo champions and we sold it at the iccb uh, uh, since 2018 we have been uh, at the bazaar and uh, to date we managed to uh, you know uh, we we plan a year in advance where they uh, we 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 first actually uh, source the material for them because uh, they are not i mean they have no idea about design style color what would work what looks nice so we we source the material we sometimes even design it ourselves we send it across to them to sew and then it comes back to, uh, to us and it is uh, it is sold at the iccb every year so even uh, the last two years when we didn't have the uh, physical bazaar we sold it online and uh, uh, the entire proceeds of what is sold is sent back to those ladies so because uh, uh, the uh, the fabric is actually sourced by us from donors so we don't have a cost attached to it and hence we are able to give the entire cost back to the zoo champions um, subsequently we extended the program from just you know stitching to candle making uh, as well as uh, you know sandals uh, uh, so i mean just dependent uh, uh, the entire program uh, you used to be based on the fact that what was required and what was saleable in that area for them as well as for us here in in colombo uh, we also opened a a uh, vocational training center uh, at nandimitra gama for the ladies where they could go across uh, you know and and so because many of them couldn't take the uh, couldn't buy a machine and so we we provided a few machines for the vocational training center and they would go there stitch and then give us the products to sell so uh, it has been a, a fantastic association with the iccb for so many years and we are very grateful for you know to them for giving us this opportunity uh and uh, uh, this year we actually are hoping to uh, you know uh, extend this beyond uh, just uh, giving them a uh, opportunity to sell uh, we hope to use uh, the proceeds from this year's sales uh, for various projects one like kamini mentioned uh, was the is the violence against women uh, uh, propaganda that we uh, hope uh, to uh, uh, have during the 16 days of activism and uh, we also have another project where we want to provide sanitary pads for school children that is something uh, which we hope to raise funds through the iccb sales this year as well it is wonderful um now zonta a lot of people have i think a misconception that since it deals with women's empowerment 
that Zonta is filled with all females. But of course, there's opportunity for males to join as well. Of course, there are few gentlemen who are doing quite well in the under the umbrella of Zonta. That is fabulous. Yes. So how can people support your causes? How can they join? I'm sure a lot of people, when they know what you do, will be happy to support. How can they do that? Well, they can reach us. We are on all the social media platforms. I think uh, Farida can shed more light on it because she's, our, uh, she's looking after the PR aspect of our club as well as the entire district. Oh, wow. lovely. Yeah, so uh, we're available on uh, both Instagram and, uh, and uh, Facebook and uh, uh, you know just a message uh, uh, just a regular search and uh, in Sri Lanka we have we have uh, four clubs three in Colombo and one in Kandy uh, so I mean if anyone is, would like to join help build a better life uh, for women and the girl child uh, please get in touch with any one of the clubs and uh, you, you'll find uh, Thank you so much Farida and Kamini for joining us today and excellent work done by you and we wish you all the best. Thank you. And uh, December is the season of giving and you have a wonderful opportunity to support some amazing organizations like the Zonta. So do visit on the 4th of December the International Christmas Charity Bazaar at the Gorkis Hotel from 11am to 3pm.